Welcome back to part two of our video series where we are creating a platform game uh, in Scratch. As you can see over here, I'll just bring up my sample from part one. We can see you've got a little red, char red character here that can jump around on these platforms simply by using our arrow keys. Okay, what we're going to do in this quick video today is put a dog on top of this red block. So I'm going to replace this character with a dog. And we're also going to be able to die when we fall off the platform and hit the bottom of the page. Okay, so to get started, what we're going to need to do is make ourselves a new block of code. Okay, we've got three different blocks here, jump control, simulate gravity, and run controls. What we're going to do is add in a fourth one. So you need to go over to more blocks here and make another block. The block is going to be called Fallen Off. Just click OK once you've given it its name. Okay, I might just move some of this code over a bit so you can see this a bit clearer. But Fallen Off here is going to be the code that we use for when we fall off the platform and hit the bottom of the screen and die. Okay. So what we're going to put under this, we're going to go to our control tab here and we're going to bring out an if then statement. Basically we want to know if we are hitting at the bottom of the page and if we are then we want to say that it's game over. So in the if section here we just need to work out our y position. So we're going to bring in an operator first of all, the less than operator. And then back in the motion tab, we're going to bring out the Y position. So if our Y position is less than minus 160. So our page goes down about minus 180. So when we get to minus 160, which is about that point there, that's when we know our dog has hit the bottom of the page and it's game over. So all we're going to do is just broadcast a message that says game over. So instead of message one here, just go down and make a new message. And call it game over. It's all one word. Click OK. Okay, so once we've fallen off platform, hit the bottom of the page, we broadcast the game over. Now we're going to bring out another block of code here that says when I receive the message game over. Okay, so when I receive game over in control, we're not going to stop all, but we're going to stop other scripts in this sprite. Okay, so basically stops all these other scripts from running, so we can't play the game anymore. Now, this fallen off piece of code is not yet activated. And what we need to do is just put it inside this forever loop up here. So when we start our game, this fallen off code will always be running. So it's always listening out for when we hit that bottom section of our page. So in more blocks, just go down and find fallen off and drag it and drop it inside this forever loop. So you've got fallen off there now. Okay, and that act activates this piece of code. And then obviously when we hit minus 160 on the y-axis, which is the bottom of our page, we just broadcast the message that it's game over. And that stops all the scripts in that sprite. Okay, so that's all well and good. Next thing we need to do is add a dog to our game. Okay, so we're going to put the dog over the top of our player block. So we can still move around using our block, but our dog's going to follow that block. Okay, so we're going to make a new sprite. And if you click on the animals category, you'll see we've got the blue dog here. Blue dog's the best one to use, so click OK. And the reason that's the best one to use is because it has multiple costumes, so we can actually animate our dog. This last um, costume here we don't need, so just delete it. We just want to have the two costumes still for our dog, so it makes it look like he's walking. So back on scripts now, uh, just hit the information symbol and rename it to dog instead of dog2. We're only going to have the one dog at the moment, so let's just leave it at dog. And you need to put in the following code to make him work. So in the events tab, drag out when the green flag is clicked. Okay. When we turn left and right, we want to make sure that he actually moves left and right and doesn't flip upside down, which is an issue if you don't put in this line of code, the set rotation style to left and right. So when we do switch left and right, he actually faces left and right. Okay, If we didn't put that in and we say turn left, he'd actually do a 180 degree flip and he'd be upside down facing to the left. Okay, So we just need to put this set rotation style in so he doesn't flip upside down. He's a little bit big. Okay, So in looks, I want you to set the size to 50%. So it's just going to half his current size. And back in motion, we're going to point him in the direction 90, which is to the right. So we're going to have him facing right when he starts. And back in looks here, we just need to show him, because we are going to hide him later on. 
when he dies, that is, but we want him showing when the game starts. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the control tab here and bring out some if-then statements. We're going to bring out two of them. Okay, first thing we're going to put inside these is when the right arrow key is pressed and when the left arrow key is pressed. So let's bring those two out. Let's start with the left arrow key and then the right arrow key. Okay, we just need to define the controls. What happens when we press the left key and the right key? So obviously when we're pushing the left key, uh, we need to get a motion here and we need to point it in direction. And we want to choose left, which is minus 90. For the right arrow key, we want to point in direction 90 degrees, which is to the right. Then we also want to change to the next costume. So our little dog is animated. Okay, so when we're pushing down on those arrow keys, not only are we facing in the right direction, but we're also changing our costume. So his legs are going to be moving to make it look as if he's running. Okay, so we can snap these two pieces of code together and we're going to put a forever loop around them. So this code is always running. Okay, and we can bring that up here now. All right, so that code is always running. It's always listening out to see if we're pressing the left key or the right key. And if we are, then we're going to obviously move in that direction. One more thing we need to do is we want to make sure that our dog attaches to the block. Okay, so we need to go to motion here. And we've got the go to mouse pointer option. I'm going to put that just below forever. And we're going to move mouse pointer. Oh, we're not going to have mouse pointer. Sorry, we're going to change it to player block. And you might have just seen that. He snaps straight onto the player block. The other thing we want to do is make sure he's in front of everything. He is at this stage, but just to make sure, we need to choose the option go to front. And put that just below go to player block. Okay, so that should be our code now to make our little guy go to our player block. So let's just run that game and you can see now our dog moves left and right and he can jump. Wherever that block goes or the red block goes, our little dog's going to follow. If I just make this full screen for a sec, you can see that his feet are overlapping the platform a little bit. Now that's alright, but it might look better if he's just pushed up a bit more. Okay, so the way we get around that is we need to go back just wait for this save to take place, but go back to the player block here and in costumes, I'll zoom in here, this center point, just move it up a little bit more. And the more you move that up, the more his little feet are going to come up. Oops. Just move him back up here so he's on top of the platform. Let's see what happens. There we go. So if I make that bigger now, you can see his feet are pretty much on top of the platform now. So if we move him around, it actually looks like he's moving on the platform and he hasn't sunk into it at all. Okay, so you need to adjust that center point on the player block if you want to get your little dog's feet walking on top of the platform nicely. Alrighty, so that's looking good. The last thing we might do in this video is make our dog um, howl and change his costume when he dies and falls off the platform. So at the moment our platform's a little bit too long, okay, and he can't actually fall off it yet. So I might go to the platform sprite here and go to costumes. Now I'm just going to have to zoom out so I can see everything. And I might grab my select tool here and just draw a box over the top of that. And just push it in a little bit. That way we've got a bit of room over the edge here for him to fall down and actually die. Okay, so back in scripts now you can see that little fella oops, has room to fall off the platform now. Okay, so we can move him over here and he can jump off and he can die. I might even move this platform up a bit higher. Okay, to about there. So if I was to run and jump off that platform now, nothing's going to happen. He'll just stop at the bottom of the page there. Okay. What we want to do is actually code it up so he changes his sprite and starts howling when he dies. Okay, so what are we going to do first? We might make a new sprite. And if we go back to animals here, we're going to bring this dog 2 back in, the blue dog. And this time, we'll rename him to Howling Dog. And we're going to go to his costumes and actually delete the first two costumes this time. So we're left with this one here, so it looks like he's thinking. Okay, that's going to be our Howling costume, so the costume he changes to when he dies. Um, so what we're going to do next is bring in the code. So while we're still clicked on the Howling Dog, we're going to go to Events and bring out when the green flag is clicked. 
So when we start our game, we want him hidden. Okay, we don't want the Howling Dog to appear straight away. We also want to set his size to 50%, just like we did with the original dog. And we're going to set his rotation style. Instead of having it left and right, we're just going to choose all around. And that means when he dies, he probably will be facing straight up. The other thing we need to bring out in the events here is when I receive game over. This is when this little guy comes into play. So when we get the message that it's game over, that's his time to shine. Okay, so in motion, we're going to go to play a block. Okay, so this little guy here will go to wherever that red block is. And we want him to be in front of that red block, so make sure you choose go to front. We're going to point him in a direction. So motion, point in direction, and it's going to be straight up. So zero degrees. And we're going to show him now. Okay, remember he was hidden when we started our game. If we get the message that it's game over, we're now going to show him. And we want to play a sound with this. Okay, so bring out play sound dog one. If we go to our sounds tab up here, you can have a listen to that. It's just a dog barking. We want a dog howling, so I'm going to get rid of that sound and I'm going to load, load in a new one. And choose animal here in the categories and look for the wolf howl. Okay, and that's going to be the sound we want. Okay, it sounds a little bit more gruesome if he's dying with that howl sound. So where you've got play sound, change it from dog one to wolf howl. Okay, and that's going to have him howling when he dies. Now the last bit of code we need to bring in, we need to do it on this original dog sprite. So go back to your dog sprite here, the original one. And we're going to bring in an event that says when I receive game over. So when we receive game over, we want to get rid of this dog. Okay, we want to hide him. So in looks, let's choose hide. Okay. Once he's hidden, obviously back in the other code that we had for the howling dog, the howling dog will show. So it's just basically going to replace one dog with another. Alright, so let's go and run this game. I'll just need to move my little blocks up here. When we run this game, we should see this guy disappear. Okay, so we've got our game working again. We've got our dog moving around. He can jump around on platforms. Let's see what happens when we jump off the platform. There we go. So we've got our game looking good so far. He can fall off the platform and he can die now. So I'll just stop that. That's all I want to show you in this video. In the next video, we're going to start making up a few different levels for our dog to work on. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.